All right, hello everyone. Hopefully you can hear me. I have a mask on at this point. Uh, I know you can't see me, but that's okay. Uh, the point of this video here is to kind of walk you through the process of creating problem number four in Onshape from the isometric model handout that I provided, which looks like this. Um, so once again, we're gonna do problem number four and problem number four will be this unit here. It's a rather simple one. Um, we're gonna pay attention to the isometric grid that you can kind of see if I were to lay down some red lines here and so forth. As you can see, that they're off at angle. And they intersect with each other. So everywhere there's an intersection, we will count that as a unit of one and we will obviously measure how wide the front is, how deep the side view, the right side view, how tall the, uh, the height of the part is, um, and then obviously the subtle details that you can kind of see here. And so once again, I have an example here at the bottom of my worksheet to kind of illustrate how this is eight units wide because if we count the spaces in between at the intersections of lines, um, you can see that they're eight. Now this doesn't necessarily reflect any specific unit of measurement. I'm gonna use inches um, you can use millimeters if you'd like, you could use centimeters. The idea of this activity is to illustrate how to 3D model these using a set um, unit measurement system, such as isometric. Uh, I'm going to create a couple other ones, such as like uh, problem number six and a variety of others. I don't think I'm going to obviously create the full set, but I want to kind of get you thinking correctly so that you can model these yourselves. So we're going to do this with Onshape, which this could also be done in SolidWorks. The operations are very similar, and the reason why I'm choosing Onshape is in case we go full on distance learning, that my students obviously can um, take, take advantage of the fact that Onshape is an online tool. Um, if you're in person, you could still use this video to kind of walk you through the, the thought process of how to create it with um, SolidWorks. So let's get started. So obviously you want to log into Onshape, onshape.com, and then log in just like I have. And you want to create a new document. I'm going to call this Problem 4. And then say OK. I'm going to wait for it to load. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. And we're going to kind of get an idea of how, how big this uh, piece is that we're going to make. So I'm going to take a look at the worksheet here. I'm going to hopefully screen capture where I'm using light shot. And we can kind of count this together. Okay, So I'm going to kind of put red lines where they are. So we're going to start here. We have one, two, three, Four, three. Some of these are a little bit harder to see because the lines. Here's four, five, six, seven. I want to just double check to make sure. I'll use arrows to kind of count the spaces. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we have seven wide, and you can write this on your paper if you have the handout. Um, so we're going to go seven, and then let's figure out how tall this unit is. So we're seven wide, let's figure out how tall. We're going to start here. That's one, two, three. Four. Okay, so so it's four tall, seven wide. So let's create that sketch in the front. Seven by four. So we're going to go over to here and we're going to create a sketch on the front plane. So we're going to click the sketch button. We're going to click the front plane. And it doesn't square it up for you like SolidWorks, but that's okay. We're going to target the origin using the two point rectangle. And just dry rectangle. And at this point, we're going to go over to the dimension tool or press D on the keyboard. We have the height 
and then we have the width. So we know seven. I'm going to quickly double check to make sure. We have one, two, three, four, four tall. So I'm going to go over to here, double click the number, four, enter. Here's our seven by four. Let's figure out how deep this sketch needs to be extruded to into the towards the back of the horizon and specifically the y-axis on this part. So let's go over here. What's our depth? Let's measure this. And we're going to start the back corner. Doesn't necessarily matter. We're just trying to count spaces. We're going to start here. Here's one space. This is hard to see. Two space. Three space, four, five, six. Now, if you count wrong or something like that, that you'll find out when you model this, and you can kind of correct things as you go. So I'm counting six deep. So we're at you know there's one space, two spaces, three, four, five, and six. Right? We have six spaces here. So we're going to go over to the, uh, we're going to say, okay, on the sketch, we're done with the sketch, clicking the checkbox, and now we're going to extrude. So I'm going to select sketch one first, so it turns orange, and then I'm going to click the extrude, and I expect it to inherit that selection, so it could extrude that. As you can see, um, I want to go into the back of the horizon towards the other direction. You can click this op opposite arrow direction. And then in terms of depth, we counted six. We're going to put six in. And we're going to say OK. And now we have all the material we need um, in, our, in our 3D environment. right? And so we're going to kind of cut away the remaining with, I think, uh, we could do this with one operation. We could do it with two. But we're going to do it with one. So we're going to create a sketch on the top plane. And I can tell that the rectangles that stick up, if you want to call them like castle pieces or what, they're, they're two by three. So we'll, we can kind of create. I'm going to try to do it the easy way. We're going to make this 2 by 3. So let's grab our dimension tool, press D. And this is 3, that direction. Ooh, why did this not work? Well, let's try this again. 3. We're going to kind of come over here. 3. And they happen to be too wide. We're not saying inches or anything, we're just sticking with abstract units even though I am drawing in inches All right so really the opposite of those two squares like the inside here is what we need but I have the majority of what I want so I'm now gonna grab the line tool and I'm gonna snap to here to here across to the other point over to here and then I'm gonna connect these two together and now I'm going to delete what I don't want. Okay, so we have the trim. We have a variety of other trim tools. We're going to go out and grab trim. And I'm going to click this and that. So those two lines will disappear. This and that. You'll notice that the dimensions have disappeared as well. And the reason why is because the dimensions were pointing to geometry I just deleted. So now let's just kind of put the dimensions up. There's your three. Now, as long as you haven't dragged anything, these numbers are accurate. So we're just kind of putting them out there so that they are subject to not change. Right? You get an idea of how big this sketch is at the top. Okay, so as you can see, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have our seven wide. We have our three deep. Um, I could dimension this if necessary. This is unnecessary. But as you can see, the sketch is fairly defined at this point. 
Um, we don't further need to do any more work. If you can see that the, there are blue lines, it means that they're subject to be modified and there are no dimensions that lock them in place. But for what we're doing, this is good enough. And we're going to just say OK. So we have our sketch sitting on the top. So we need to figure out how much material we need to remove. And we have one, two, three, four. It should be four tall. And I just want to double check to make sure. So we're going to go to the extrude, the sketch one. And we want to show it. And I just double clicked it. And it is four tall. So we're going to take half of that away. So by just double clicking sketches, you can get into the sketch construction. So if we needed to modify that, we could have. So if it's four tall, we're going to take two of this away. We're going to do an extrude cut using sketch two. So we're going to click sketch two. And we're going to say extrude. And we're going to remove material in the downward direction. And then we should say two. And we're going to say OK. And that is our part. So we can also hide our planes at this point. Click the eye. And then we can kind of click the isometric corner. And there we have it. So that is problem four. Um, to further this, I'm just going to kind of refer to this as there's going to be an orthographic uh, drawing model video that's associated to this. This will be problem four in terms of constructing the 3D model. And then we are going to create a drawing over here by clicking, oops, not the search, but the plus. And we're going to create a drawing of it. And then there'll be a tab viewable there. Okay. So we'll do that in the next video. So hopefully you're able to follow along. Obviously you can replay this. That's the point of me recording. And um, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. Or obviously, if you're my student, send me an email or Google Classroom. Have a good day, everyone.